Alrighty, so uh, last lesson we looked at hypotheses, and now we're going to look at designs. I would give them two choices. Um, most students want to do matched pairs. They, I mean, so many of them go, well, let's do it because it's the most valid. But I think the practical limitations of this um, often outweigh the benefits, and yeah, it's. I just think it's often really a, a good choice. So I would really direct them towards these two. Okay, I mean, maybe they can make a case for it, but that's my advice. So again, just trying to keep it simple. So they have to choose one and then explain it. Um, just to recap, I would uh, maybe just check in with some traffic lights. How confident are they with these things? And just remind them, right, if they're, if they're leaving these things unfinished, then it's all going to um, pile up at the end. So, you know, if let's over the weekend or whenever they have time, they should be um, adding into their workbook and keeping up to date with that as much as possible. All right. So um, just to recap, so if you've done quantitative methods in chapter 6 already, this will just be recap, um, but it's a good one to do. What are the experimental designs? What does that mean? Okay, we can explain that. And then here's just my comment about match pairs um, and why I don't recommend it. Alrighty, so um, here's this an activity, get them thinking about it. So if we were to use these designs with these particular studies, what might some of the limitations be? You can skip this activity if you want, but... Um, here are the answers. It just gets them thinking about it. And really, I think we do want to be trying to get students to use this terminology. Okay, If they can be identifying these particular um, extraneous variables that they're controlling for, it makes the explanation a lot easier. All right, now it's their turn. Uh, up to them. What's their design and what's the reason? And then they write that in their workbooks. Um, the biggest limitation I see in student explanations of designs are they just they're really vague and general, and it is tricky because I wrote the example I myself, and it is kind of kind of tricky to explain it properly. But you do want students to be specific and how that particular design controls for uh, an extraneous variable. And so here's a, a, a couple of slides to help you explain you know how they might have to do that. Um, so they should be able to explain how it controls for an extraneous variable, and it might also have practical advantages. Um, they could also explain it by saying why they didn't choose the other design type. I think that's perfectly acceptable as well. Here's another placeholder for you uh, as a teacher. Um, you might just want to give them a warning. Um, just keep looking ahead of what's coming up. Uh, you know, if they, uh, depending on when they have to conduct studies, you know, if they need their informed consent forms ready to give out ahead of time. Um, and yeah, so, so you just might be thinking about how you're going to logistically get your study done. So um, <clears throat> they might, yeah, they might have to get their informed consent done ready, uh, early. All right, um, and then just a reflection, check in how they're going and can maybe talk about what they can do to catch up. And then we get into talking about sampling. 